Welcome to the Pitch Vision Academy Cricket Show, your guide to better cricket, no matter who you are, no matter where you are. We're here to help you out. My name is David Hinchliffe. I'm here every week. And helping me to help you are two very fine cricket coaches. Definitely two this week. If you were listening last week, I said there were two, and then there was mysteriously only one. And the, the one it was last week is the director of cricket at Millfield School. It's Mark Garraway. Hello, Garris. How are you? I'm oh, very well, thanks very much. And, and again, the sun is shining, and that always makes a, uh, a difference to my disposition. Of course it does. Everyone, everyone has the same feeling, I feel, I think. Secondly, it's the, the mystery man who never appeared last year, uh, last week, I should say. But uh, he's, he's had a year off. Had a year off, <laughs> but he certainly <laughs> appeared this week. Uh, it's um, the director of cricket performance at Portsmouth Grammar School. It's Sam Lavery. And general legend. And general legend, Sam Lavery. So, uh, Lavers, you were here last week, but we never managed to to uh, get you into the podcast. I was bit, I was I was you having just a, silent the whole time. No, what was I doing? Let me think of something <laughs> good. Um, I was I was having a meet. I was I was down at Millfield having a meeting about a job. Um, director of crickets coming up. I've I've been told it's uh, it's very hush hush. So, uh, but uh, yeah, they said. Um, they said no. Could they get your number instead? So I passed your number, on Dave. Oh, that's good. well. I haven't heard from them, so um, obviously <laughs> yeah. no no changes at the top. No changes at the top. I think it's set for a while. Okay, let's uh, answer some questions. Some uh, questions that have been sent into the show by listeners to the podcast, or perhaps readers to the Pitch Vision website over at pitchvision.com. And how it works is we do our best to answer these questions, and then we choose. The best question of the week that wins a prize of an online coaching course from Pitch Vision Academy at pitchvision.com. And um, if you're thinking of sending in a question to us, you can email coach at pitchvision.com for a future show or get us through social media, which we'll tell you about towards the end of the show. And the first person, one of the one of the better names um, of, of all time, I guess. Um, and this is genuinely his name. He genuinely sent in this question under this name. It's from Torpedo Thompson. So hello, Torpedo. And Torpedo says, I'm a 20-year-old player who's looking to play red-hot drives. I play shots relatively well, but my bat speed is slow to moderate. What can I do to improve bat speed? What can we do for Torpedo? If he doesn't win question, if he doesn't win question of the week, Arras, <laughs> I'm going to be disappointed. Well, he's, he's giving himself a start, hasn't he? You know, he's 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 giving him he's up he's up in the uh, in the leaders at that point. He's at the top of the peloton, and he could pull away. You never know. You never know. I mean, firstly, <laughs> firstly, if that is his genuine name, as you've just said, David, that is absolutely brilliant. And what parents he must have. Um, fantastic uh, foresight to uh, to see where he was going to go. Um, and I suppose Torpedo could be applied into a number of different sporting uh, arenas. Um, but uh, in cricket, I'm, I'm happy with Torpedo, Thompson. I love him that. Um, is the next question about his slow, medium pace? Yeah, you'd be disappointed, Zanagi. wouldn't you? You, you? you would be. Sorry, I've got slow, I've got slow muscle fibers, slow twitch muscle fibers, and actually, I, I whip it out down the other end. Uh, but I've got a great name, so it's okay. Um, so, how to get power and speed into your hands is a, it's a great question, absolutely magnificent, and it's very topical, isn't it? We've got the ICC. Uh, ICC Champions Trophy literally just around the corner now and um, you know we're going to see people that uh, have got significant bat speed playing in, in that tournament and, and it is something that can be improved but you know sort of following on really from the last conversation that we've had having an understanding of where bat speed can be generated rather than just uh, swinging the bat harder, which is what a lot of people do to, to try and generate bat speed, is, is really useful. So, you know, have a look at your own bat swing. Get somebody to video it from the side, I think. So if they're chest onto you, get them to video it from the side. And, and, what, and what you'll do is get a bit of an awareness about what's going on. And I think that's dead useful because I only actually realised what my bat swing did when I, I played a game four years ago and it happened to have... You know, a lot of people playing that were far better than me in it. Um, but I did manage to scrape a few and, and back there long enough that the photographers that were here to take pictures of far more famous people than me actually ended up taking some pictures of me uh, hitting the old ball. And I could not believe how high my backswing was. Um, and 
it was unreal. It was like miles above my head. And I looked like a fat, right-handed, balding Brian Lara batting uh, with obviously less skill uh, and uh, touch, that is for sure. Um, but my bat swing was really, really high. And I thought that it was just because I was trying to hit the ball out of the park. But actually, when the sequence of pitches came through, I blocked it to deep cover for one. Um, and then when I did hit one out of the park, it was exactly the same. So what I'd created there was uh, a range of motion. It was a big uh, distance for me to pull that bat over in a relatively short uh, uh, bit of time. And, and most players who um, hit the ball really, really hard and far and generate what we call bat speed are able to pull their bat, whether it's from a high position like myself or whether it's from a, a position that's gone backwards um, uh, to be able to get that into the uh, hitting zone over a range of motion because effectively when our f front foot if we're playing a front foot shot hits the ground that is the start of our downswing into the ball so uh, the time that it takes from top of your bat swing to contact zone is going to be relatively the same whether you've got a short swing or a long swing um, that's the way that the body works so therefore the longer the swing the same amount of time equals faster hands faster bats so that's the first thing to look at so get somebody to take a picture from the side or a video from the side work out how far yours is and then and then sort of play around can you get your hands further back by pushing them further back can you get them uh, to go back in and up uh, to create a bigger range of motion uh, and have a go from there the other thing that you can consider as well is something that Kevin Peterson's done which has come off of the back of him being now a T20 specialist so KP if you can recall when he was playing for England had what I'd call quite a closed back face at the top of his bat swing um, and that was fantastic and yeah he could hit sixes he hit plenty of them uh, you know he hit loads and loads of sixes in all formats of a game um, but when he went to T20 because Kev wasn't quite happy enough uh, just hitting sixes because he was now a T20 player. He wanted to try and hit bigger sixes because you know the lads with the biggest egos like the um, like the Chris Gales and the Virat Kohlis and the, and the Ob De Villiers. They want to not just hit it for six, but they actually want to hit it miles, don't they? And you see that in, in Chris Lynn and uh, and uh, Dan Christian as well. So what he did was actually open up his bat face at the top top of his bat swing. And that opening of the bat face at the top of the bat swing creates an extra link in that change, that, in that kinetic chain. And obviously, the smaller the links get, the faster they go at the end of the swing. So what he did was to create that, um, and therefore his wrists were rotating at a faster rate than they ever had done in his downswing, and as a result, the, the bat was moving faster. And now he's not just hitting sixes, but actually he's hitting sixes further than he's ever done before. And if you want to have a look at that, you can see that in the, in the challenge that they did on uh, some uh, soft drink did between him and Gale, where he actually tried, to, tried that for the first time in preparation for that, because he wanted to beat Chris Gale at hitting the ball the furthest. So yeah, two things, range of motion of a bat, and secondly, if you've got a closed bat swing at the top of your bat swing, can you open it up to increase uh, the number of chains in your link? Obviously, the tip of the whip goes faster than the handle, and the, the longer it is, it will, it will pingy and crack even more, and that's exactly what he's done. Davis, there's um, a strength and conditioning element to this as well, I suppose, in that, you know, if you've got more, if you've got more strength and speed in your muscles and your joints, then you can put more into the ball. Absolutely, with as with any anything, whether it's batting or bowling or throwing a ball in or, or running around, there's there's going to be a, a strong element of of technique and how you go about actually moving in, and there's going to be an element of the the physical side of your kind of strength conditioning and your preparation in that point of view to get things moving faster as well. So um, a contribution from both is usually a, a good starting point, and there may be some people who are particularly good at one and they, they're a little bit weaker than the other and that's where they can maybe dedicate a little bit more time but on the whole we want to try and work on both sides of the uh, the equation as much as we can so strength, strength wise we're developing power and that's what we want is that speed of bat we need to think about what are our general power principles and if you look at the some of the weighted bowling things that we do we've talked about in the past and and Steph talks about quite a lot with the, uh, your overweight, underweight type stuff. It's your basic power principle, which has been used for years in in the kind of gym environment, and it's just transferring it into a 
into a cricket environment. So um, you can get a um, a heavy bat, or a, it's um, uh, basically a, you can get a rubber weight that st- attaches to your bat um, from Heavy Trainer. They're called. They used to, used to be Heavy Racket, but now they're Heavy Trainer because we've got them doing some work across a number of sports now, and they're um, they're really useful. You can just attach them to your your cricket bat, which takes ten seconds. Um, either put it on the toe or put it over the top of the handle and that adds a little bit of weight for you and then you can go and do some fairly maximal swings or go and even bat in net with it or hit some tennis balls wherever you want but again looking to try and hit the ball fairly hard um, and then you can go the other side you can drop down you can go down to below your normal bat weight so I would imagine I haven't, I haven't had a cricket <laughs> sounds like I haven't had a cricket bat for a while now I'd imagine the average kind of bat weight is still 2.9, 2.10 would that be pretty fair David? Oh, it's not my area either yeah something like that yeah I would have thought yeah something like that so effectively we're taking it we're, we're going to be taking it up 10% and then we're going to take it, be taking it down 10% or something like that so if you can if you can work with a bat with a weight on like that and then you can drop down to a bat that's a little bit lighter um, and the easy thing to do if you're a cricket club or if you're at a school is obviously grab um, grab a harrow or a size 6 if you're if you're using a full size bat or just take one that's down a little bit because it's generally going to be a similar shape, but it's just going to be a bit shorter, so there'll be a little bit less weight in it. So um, a simple program we work to is try and get each session, um, the boys do some weighted back swings, and it's it's usually just going to be six at the start of the session, so they'll do six weighted back swings with the, the heavy trainer on, six with the um, six with the lighter bat, um, and we've got a load of old light cricket bats lying around, and then six with a normal bat. And then we'll go out and repeat it at the end of their session, whatever they've done, whether it's uh, they're having a hit in the net or on a machine or on the side or whatever it might be. Um, and doing it as a one-off isn't going to make an enormous difference. It might make you feel like you're a little bit more powerful, but the end result's not going to be enormously difference, but different. But if you can um, keep that to a, a, simple, um, uh, a simple bit of consistency throughout your week and throughout your month and your season and your off-season, etc., you will see that you're hopefully going to improve that back speed speed there's a couple of other drills you can do med balls wise as well so um gareth talks about multiple movements and adding in the wrists one of the things that people often miss out on a little bit is is that um trunk rotation so trying to get those hips driving through so again another exercise we try and get in there with a med ball is um what we call a shot push which is effectively a shot put but instead of throwing it up in the air you're rotating and driving it forwards and the other one is um a uh, variation on a rugby pass again with a med ball Um, just remember you want to be moving as quickly as you can when you're doing these kind of movements so like a rotational rugby pass we want to be moving fast so don't go overly heavy with the weight don't go and get yourself a 15 kilo med ball thinking heavier is stronger and that's more powerful because often that's not the case we want to try and move at top speed rotate at top speed with a weight um, and if we go too heavy, we're not actually going to train ourselves to move that fast. So keep your speed high, keep your weight down. Speaking of bats, my bat is averaging over 50 in uh, in three digs this season already. Um, <coughs> How about uh, that? I haven't touched it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, been, it's, been borrowed by, it's been borrowed by two batsmen who have got four, who got 43 and 50-something 50 and 50-something, 50 so I'm um, 50-something not out, so... <laughs> Brilliant. Are you, you going to bat this year or not? Um, no plans to, let's put it that way. <clears throat> if I'm, if okay, I'm, but the bat's still scoring If runs. I'm batting this year, I might, something might have gone wrong, so let's hope not. Let's hope not. Well, as long as the, the bat keeps churning them out. Right, exactly. the, the old club bat. Exactly, exactly. The guy who got the second fifty with it said to the guy who got the first fifty with it, "Your bat is brilliant." <laughs> so, like, if they bat together, exactly. they just drop it in the middle every time they play a shot, and then just, yeah, hand yeah. hand it over like a <laughs> like a baton in the middle. Yeah. Next question is from Brad, and uh, Brad says, "Our club's net facilities are very poor. Can you recommend any drills that don't require nets? We are able to use old wickets on our square." Well, firstly, I'd say make use of that old, those old wickets, but, but be very specific about how you're using those. So think about the context that you want to you wanna practice, which actually utilises uh, the, the conditions and the characteristics of that, those old pitches really well. And it might be that you're, you're practising to hit, uh, hit at the end of an innings on slower decks. It could be um, playing spin and learning how to sweep spin and play back 
um, from you know play back to balls that are spinning by utilising areas of rough and just shifting where the stumps are in relation to that pitch. So you know old pitches are, are fantastic. The only thing you've got to do is have a great relationship with your groundsman because generally those old pitches are the ones that the groundsman wants to work on most because they're probably going to have to recycle that for later in the season at some point. So um, that was always a, a cup of tea uh, to discuss that one with any any groundsman that I've got. Um, to make sure that happens but they can be really really useful uh, things that we can't recreate very easily in nets and one of the things that Hampshire years ago when I used to bat against Shane Warne in the mornings and uh, obviously uh, he was fairly useful and I wasn't so uh, and often I couldn't pick him so when I was trying to play against him I'd revert to just sweeping him and because my sweep was pretty good and because I was playing on a, a flat surface because there was nobody bowling at the at my end and creating rough, I was able to sweep him quite a lot uh, from length. And he'd say, that's all very good, Garris, but wait until you get out there in a game against me when uh, when I've got rough to go into. And, and bottom line is that nets don't often create that for us. So it's a fantastic opportunity to be real because you are going to have bowlers at both ends in games. So make use of those nets and uh, make use of that w- wicket out in the middle and and create some sweet practice or playing against spinners out of a rough because uh, the last thing you want to do is only face that when you get into a game. So that would be my first call. The second thing is, ultimately, to practice cricket, you don't need nets. We make too big a thing of nets. Uh, and whilst they are useful for practicing your match play strategies and how you go about it in games, rarely do actually people take advantage of that and utilize them for that. They just try and hit shots and bowl balls and all of that malarkey and, you know, uh, without being too blasé and a bit simple Glenn McGrath ended up with 500 and lots of uh, test wickets and he, he did most of his practice when he was a kid running up and trying to hit a water butt on his farm uh, so uh, you know uh, Ian Healy learned how to keep wicket by chucking a golf ball up against a wall um, and creating little deflections off of different surfaces uh, on on the floor and, and I copied that so I taught myself how to keep wicket I taught myself how to Play spin by doing, you know, throwing a ball up against the the, uh, the extension wall and and trying to avoid hit breaking as many windows as possible and hitting it between plant pots and all of that sort of thing. So you know, fielding you can do up against the wall. You can throw a ball up against the wall. You can get a bit of chalk, scrawl on a set of stumps, uh, chuck it up against the wall, get the angle coming back at you, so you can be moving left and right and and hitting those chalk stumps. You know, really take it back to. Uh, take it back to basics um, and again we did this a lot last year because if you remember rightly those that listening enough the, the cricket bubble our indoor facility here at school blew down uh, blew down in uh, um, November uh, of last year and we spent the whole of a winter outside on tennis courts uh, in any space that we could possibly find um, and we created lots of skill development games um, and as a result of that our skills went through the roof and uh, bizarrely some people would say but actually logically in my head uh, that Millfield had its best ever year without having the indoor facility to practice running and bowling each other and batting against each other um, so go out there be creative don't see it as a um, as a challenge see it as an opportunity really because uh, a lot of players end up playing for England and a lot of players uh, end up picking up trophies um, last summer as a result of actually developing their skills so uh, it, you, you've only got you yeah the limit of your imagination is really the limit of what you can do without nets if you've got a great big space of course you don't have to try and use every corner corner of it you know you can as you said Gareth, um you can just work on a specific shot and then then you can have guys fielding in that area and then suddenly you know you've got a, a fielding practice a batting practice and um you know, someone chucking a few balls down and you're away to go. And you don't necessarily even need to go as far as saying, oh, okay, well, we're going to have a full game as as a, you know, as a practice match because that takes a lot of effort. And often people get a bit bored and, and wander off after a while that I find. I don't know if you get that. If, if sometimes you, you get a lack of consistent um, intensity with the fielding of middle practice labours. Do you find that? Yeah, it can, it can be tricky if you've got the whole field set up. So you've got... Um, uh, 11 people out there so um, bowling bowling, keeping and then 9 fielders so that can become a little bit tedious for the people who aren't involved as much as they can but we, what we try and do is sometimes we'll have um, 
middle practice with a net, sometimes without a net. And, and often what we try and do is, if we've got a specific area we're looking to hit as a bowler, we've then got a specific shot we're trying to create as a batter, we can marry the two up and then that creates a little pocket of where the ball's most likely to go. Um, and that high traffic area can then have two or three fielders in it. So everyone who's involved is doing something productive that is working towards what they're trying to achieve. And it might be you're trying to hit... Um, you might try and hit a wide Yorker, in which case you end up with a, um, a third man, a gully, a, a backward point, a whatever, um, and those people in those kind of positions, and, and there's no requirement for your leg side fielders because your bowlers are trying to hit in a specific area. So that means it's going to happen a lot more often. Obviously, if you get two bowlers rotating through, so you're not in a match format, but you get two or three guys running in, then there's a lot more activity going on as well. So those people are out there actually getting lots and lots of repetitions in quite a short space of time, and they're actively involved in all of them. Um, so doing that, and you can readapt it for different lines, different lengths, different batters, different shots, um, and get people fielding in different ways, then... It's, um, it's a really good way to give them that kind of match practice and that feeling of being out in the middle, which is often a big confidence boost if someone bowls particularly well or bats particularly well in the, in the middle as opposed to in a net. It can mean a little, add a little more value to them and how they're performing. Um, but it should be a pretty simple um, way to keep, keep people involved without having that, I'm fielding on square leg fence and I'm not really doing a lot and the guy's hitting top of off and I'm, and I'm not in the game. So you can really just direct everything a little bit more to, to make everyone's practice more, effect, practice more effective. And that is the end of the show for another week. Before we go, we do need to decide on one thing, which is the winner of this week's competition. The online coaching course from Pitch Vision Academy at pitchvision.com. Two questions on offer. One from, as a reminder, Torpedo Thompson, who was asking about something to do with something. Uh, bat speed. And uh, another one from Brad, who was asking about um, drills that don't require nets. So which one did you prefer this week, Garris? Well, you know, it's history, isn't there? Uh, when it comes to these types of decisions and um, <laughs> history and tradition are amazing things and I have ultimate respect for them but this week I'm going to break with tradition I'm actually oh. going to go with Brad's question around club net facilities <laughs> and, and as you can hear it's a popular move uh, but no Brad ser seriously mate see it as an opportunity um, get creative uh, and I think um, uh, I think if you do that then you'll you'll support cricketers brilliantly and you'll probably support your own game at the same time Torpedo Thompson unlucky and when I say unlucky I mean seriously unlucky the thing that did it was the claim from David that it was a genuine name and I'm not convinced that your parents called you that at birth <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm only going by the, what came through on the on the Facebook message, so, you know. Well, it's your fault if he's... In here. all fairness, guys, we don't know Brad's surname yet. It could be. So, yeah. Brad, could be Batman. Good his shout. surname, it could be anything. Maybe we can so find Brad that out when we give him a prize. <laughs> there you go. There we go. We'll find Get that out. Get thinking, Brad. Come up with something good. <laughs> well done, Brad. And Gareth, if um, there was anyone with any name, I mean, you know, we, we, we fondly remember Bonga, of course, but if there's anyone with any name who wants to send in a question, they've got a good chance. We know that now. How could they get in touch with us and send that question in? Well, it's an open playing field now, David. So if anybody wants to give us a call, it's uh, 0203 239 7543 or drop us an email on coach at pitchvision.com. That's correct. You can also get us via social media. If you go to pitchvision.com, we've got a social media platform there for sending messages through to us at Pitch Vision Academy. Or you can uh, do it via Facebook, facebook.com slash pitchvisionacademy, or Twitter at pitchvisionacad. You can listen to the show every week by subscribing. You can do that by going to any podcast catching app, doing a search for Pitch Vision Academy, and tapping or clicking on the subscribe button. Or you can go to pitchvision.com slash academy, and click on the podcast link and you get all the old show notes, all the old shows you can download, stream, do all lots of crazy and fun things over there as well as check out the latest articles. That's all for this week. We hope you listen next week. But until then, have a good week. Cheers, Garris. Cheers, Lavis. Cheers, boys. Cheers, guys. <laughs>